Well, hello everyone. It's Angela with Mystic Moon bringing you guys your Divine Masculine weekly forecast. And today's theme is the masculine's haunted heart. You are my permanent scar. So we are going to look into your Divine Masculine's past and just see why he is the way that he is and why he may have sabotaged this connection or why you guys may have experienced challenges with this particular Divine Masculine, as well as how he is haunted by your memory to this day. Day. So obviously just take what resonates for you and get rid of anything that doesn't. All the decks I'll be using as well as this Organite here will be listed in the description box down below. So let's get into these messages. We're going to take a look and see what is the scar tissue. What is the root of this divine masculine fear and truly letting you into his heart? Let's look at this. What is at the root of this masculine fear when it comes to letting you into his heart divine feminine? Mm, we have mommy issues with Norman Bates. Okay, I'm just getting here caretaker. It, it doesn't matter if it was a mother or a father. There are some sort of family-related issues here immediately coming through. But yes, specifically for those of you that know that there is a troubled uh, relationship that this masculine has, it could be lack of a mother. So being abandoned completely, having no mother figure, um, or just basically having issues with a very overbearing, maybe even a narcissistic mother, a mother that wasn't present, um, et cetera. All of these things can create different issues. So that is what we're being shown here immediately in this reading. All right, let's get some tarot cards and see what else. Mm, with three swords, damn. Three swords can be a uh, triangulation, okay? So like a triangle, lover's triangle. I am picking up on um, several different things here. Just take what resonates. It's almost like a mother who does either not, doesn't have a romantic partner or has a romantic partner that does not meet their their needs. And so they use the masculine for um, almost like a, I can't, like a, like a side person um, to fulfill these needs. I'm not getting, you know, like, you know what I'm talking about, you guys, just using someone to do things with and to hang out with and, and, and just meeting the needs that maybe your husband should be meeting. Um, so there's some kind of an issue here, some sort of a, a situation that's toxic. Um, this could even be using someone else to make someone jealous, which is very odd. So you guys, you guys may know about this. There might be somebody... Um, like you've met the mother or you realize like, wow, there's a real toxic connection um, between um, mother, but it could be lack of mother too, you guys. So I don't know, I'm just getting tongue twisted because it's very sensitive and I don't want to say too, too much. So I'm just going to leave it there. Okay. You either know or you don't know. Be the seven of pentacles. Ooh, it's, this card you can't really see, but it's the girl from the exorcist that's coming downstairs and she's coming down in a back bend and it's really creepy, okay? I feel like this is hidden energy. This is something like behind closed doors, like maybe on the outskirt or the out outside, everything looks perfectly put together, but on the inside, there's something that's really off. There's something that's just um, toxic is what I'm getting here. So the Seven of Pentacles is a card of just kind of being suspended, just kind of things are on hold. We're, we're, we're taking a little bit of a pause. There's um, not growth. So it's like somebody's being stunted. Somebody's being held back. That's what it is. Somebody's being held back. This could also be a mother that came in between you and this masculine. Always looked at you as you weren't good enough or created a drama or an issue. This may not resonate for everybody out there, you guys, so please don't take it if it doesn't. But this is a very specific set of masculines who had issues with a um, dominant female figure in their life, whether it was their mother or it could have been even an, like an ex or even like mother of their children kind of thing. And this creates issues for this particular uh, masculine. He may not know how to pull himself out of that triangle. He may be heavily influenced by this person. He may be controlled in some way. This could of course stem from childhood, him choosing women or partners that are like this, that, re that repeat this cycle for him. But there's definitely a stuck energy is what I'm seeing here, okay? All right, let's continue. Just in case that didn't resonate with somebody out there. Mm, we have restricted. Okay, so let's just let's just say that this mommy thing didn't 
didn't uh, jive. It, it just didn't resonate because maybe this masculine didn't have a mother growing up. And because his mother was absentee or just not there or, or just not focused on him, it could have created issues for him where now he is as an adult, just kind of avoids being exposed, avoids being vulnerable, um, doesn't want to be vulnerable, had to protect himself, had to be strong on his own because his feelings didn't matter, etc. I'm not a psychologist or anything like that, but I'm just basically giving to you th the things that I'm picking up on, but also the things that I have read on these types of situations of the things that can happen. But yeah, you can see there, it's like um, restricted. Like I I want to open up, I want to be vulnerable, but I don't want to be ex exposed either. So I restrict myself. Candy also too, it's like, oh, it seems so tantalizing. I want to reach for that candy, but I know I shouldn't. So there's this feeling of I want it, but I need to protect myself and I can't have it. It's like being on a restrictive diet. You want it, the desire is there, but you have to be disciplined enough to say no. So this could be something that this masculine battles with. Maybe he was very restricted growing up at some point. And so now he doesn't allow himself to actually truly let anybody in. There's the Eight of Swords. That's a stuck energy imprisonment. <laughs> we know Hannibal Lecter, he obviously has an appetite, right? <laughs> so um, he he's hungry, just like the, this candy. I want the candy. I want this thing, but I'm behind bars. I can't get to what I want. I can't have the things I want. So this could be a masculine that doesn't feel like he deserves good things, doesn't feel um, like he deserves it for whatever reason. So he holds himself back from it. He restricts himself or he's just fearful of letting himself be exposed. So he almost in a way incarcerates himself and stays deliberately stuck. So he doesn't have to be vulnerable and open up to anyone. Hmm. Very interesting. Page of wands. He's curious though. He is curious. That's babysitting. Um, I really feel like this masculine may it could go either way and I'm not going to spend too much time going back and forth on it, but there could be a handful of masculines where the person caretaker was very overbearing and really enmeshed themselves. That's the word I was looking for before. A mother that may have enmeshed herself with her son, okay, which can create major damage. This page of wands though, this babysitter, it's like some figure or caretaker could have done this as well. Um, or there was just not a lot of, uh, you know, like supervision. So somebody had to be on their own, basically. They had to be on their own. The parents weren't there, is what I'm seeing with that too. But Page of Wands is curiosity. I was never taught this. I was never, I was never really um, educated on this. So I'm really curious about what it would be like to taste this candy, to let someone to feel these things. But at the same time, it's foreign to me and I don't know what to do with it once I have it, so I might just run for the hills. Yeah. So this masculine may have dabbled with you a little bit feminine, kind of dipped his toe in, but could have ran for the hills when things became too vulnerable for him. Yep, there's that third party energy here. This could be a masculine who was exposed to a terrible relationship that he saw with his parents or there could have been affairs and things like that. And so it's just like, I've never really been taught that that's, you know, not, not successful uh, relationship material. Um, this could also be feeling good only when there is a triangle situation, which means if I'm not getting my needs met here, I can always go over here, always having the basis covered. So this could be a masculine who goes from one situation to the next, always having his bases covered, never feeling the, the loss or the abandonment. He's always feeling full because he's, he's always got something in the next, like there's always something in the, in the works. Yeah. Serial che cheater, serial dater, something like that could have developed as well. All right, let's see what else. Queen of Cups. I feel like this masculine really longs though for a loving companion, but I don't know that he knows how to stay with it long-term. I don't know that he knows how to stay attracted to that loving, kind, nurturing energy. It's like he says that he wants it, but when he has it, he may not know how to remain um, interested or motivated by it. I want it. I'm curious about it, but when I get it, I don't really know how to sustain it. I don't know how to keep it. I don't... I, 
it's like the masculine may lose interest in people that are good for him, people that are honest, people that are loving and caring and kind. And of course, this could be uh, perhaps the original caretaker was not that way. So he equates that to, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's mixed up in his mind when it comes to love and attachment. All right, let's see what else. Mm, damn. <laughs> I feel like the Queen of Swords is probably the caregiver or wherever this mommy issue came from. The Queen of Swords is can be cutthroat. She's out for blood, obviously, right here. She's a vampire in this season. This is Hotel from American Horror Story. She's a vampire. And we know, too, she's the Countess, and so she's a badass, but, I mean, she's ruthless at the same time. But it's interesting. She has a story, though. If you guys have ever seen that show, I don't want to ruin it for you, but she has a story as to why she is the way that she is. So, of course, everybody has a story, just like this divine masculine. This masculine has a story for a reason, but it's up to us as adults on are we going to rewrite that story? Are we going to learn from our past? Are we going to heal? Of course, everybody can. You know, whether we choose to or not will be up to us. So I feel like this is the spirit's way of letting you, divine feminine, know that you may have came in with your loving, kind nature, but it's very difficult for this masculine to let you in because this is what he is programmed to love. This is what he's programmed that he feels that he deserves is the Queen of Swords. So you're presenting the Queen of Cups, but the Queen of Swords is where he feels comfortable. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. So if right now you guys are in a third party situation with this masculine where he has chosen to be with this person instead of you, realize that this is stemming from some sort of an old program that he has not cleared yet. So I hope that that helps. All right. Right. Let's see. Now we're going to go into the phantom. What memories of you and your situation continue to haunt your divine masculine to this day? Let's look at that. All right, what memories continue to haunt your divine masculine to this day? We have the decay. This love is slowly dying. Ooh, okay. So the haunting memories that this masculine has, it may be that there's slow progress right now. It may be that there's something that's been, you know, going on for a long period of time, okay? Because it's like slow and drawn out. So he might be haunted to this day to the fact that he's let this maybe um, slowly die or he hasn't really, um, you know, uh, st stood up or uh, stepped up, stepped up to the plate to change these circumstances around with you. So I feel like he's haunted by his lack of action. He's haunted by letting it die and not doing anything about it. That's what I'm getting. Let's see what else. Mm. Okay. So of course the costume here, it's about the art of disguise. And when you're navigating tricky situations, I feel like this masculine may not have fought for you, Divine Feminine. He may not have fought to be truthful and honest with you. He may have disguised, held back a lot of his true feelings and in a way just kind of let you take the fall or let you believe whatever you are going to believe. And this, of course, could have been extremely upsetting for you because it didn't have to be this way is what I'm picking up on. Had the masculine been strong, stronger at the time, maybe he would have done it differently. But this is his best way of navigating this tricky situation is to either pretend he didn't care or maybe avoid it altogether. So I feel like he let it just kind of slowly die or I just slowly faded away from your life instead of really telling you what was going on or facing this head on. I just decided to just take the easy way out. That's what I'm getting. So it haunts him that he did this. Haunts him that he didn't handle himself better with you. Yeah, look at that. I was just too overwhelmed at the time. Couldn't de deal with it. Ten of Wands. I was like in my own personal hell. It was hell for me. It was hell to face you. It was hell to tell you the truth. It was hell to just deal with this. So it was easier for me to just put on this mask and pretend that I didn't care or pretend that I was unbothered or just pretended, period. And it, maybe even just block this out and walk away and just let it slowly just, you know, fade. So I feel like this masculine is extremely avoidant to the way that he handled the situation with you, feminine, and it does still haunt him till the, or to this day, or is it till this day? I don't know. All right, let's get another. Let's see what else. What other memories about your situation continue to haunt the subject of masculine? We have the rival. Mm, that's interesting, huh? 
says a silent competitor wants what is yours. What might haunt this masculine are two things. Either now there's someone in your life, divine feminine, and so he would now have to rival for your affection or to win you back. So he could have lost you, you know, after letting you go, you could have moved on with your life and now you have someone else. So that, that could also be a third party energy. Um, it could also be that he went with another person. That could be that third party as well. Went with somebody else. It might haunt him that decision or that he let somebody silently come in and create issues or drama, which could be the mother caretaker figure or an ex or some someone of influence. Dummy. <laughs> okay. It says, develop your skills and talents, but do things your own way. He didn't. He didn't do things his own way. He was allowing someone to pull his strings. That's what I'm seeing here. And it was this rival, this person that was in the way. Uh, they either knew about you or they didn't know about you. Regardless, though, they had some sort of a bond with this divine masculine and they had power and influence over him. And this masculine at the time, in a way, was a dummy and just didn't have strength to fight this off and to do it any differently. So he ended up either doing what somebody else wanted him to do instead of doing things his own way. So he might have regret that he allowed someone to influence him and that he was not in control of his decisions. It could also be just fear, good old fashioned fear and control of the decisions. So in retrospect, now he does have some sort of regret that he wasn't more developed at the time and wasn't stronger when it came to making decisions with you in this connection. So it haunts them. Yeah, look at that devil energy here. Toxic patterns. Yeah, there's definitely a toxic uh, codependency. This could be a, either a dependency on certain things like substances or just behavioral patterns. Whatever it was, though, there was major toxic vibes around this masculine. And I feel like it's definitely connected to a person or really stemmed from a very significant figure in their life. And it doesn't give them a pass as to, well, they only did those things because they were, you know, they were messed up or whatever. Everybody does certain things, but it is about realizing that we're hurting other people. And I don't know that this masculine had the strength or the awareness at that time to do it any differently. So that is what what is haunting him to this day is that he let his toxic past or he let his toxic behavior really screw things up between the two of you so definitely feels badly about that all right let's see what else what else haunts this masculine We have the circus. <laughs> it says you'll regret your choice to play this game. Okay. So whatever, whatever, however he played, okay, whatever play or move he made, he regretted it. Okay. So he ended up either getting played or he let someone play him and he ended up sabotaging and ruining things with you in the meantime. So it was like in a, in a way there's this feeling of, well, I guess there's no going back. There's no turning back. It's too, it's too messed up. So there's regret with the people around him or some influence, influential person around him. <clears throat> All right. So ghouls gateway. I feel like this masculine could have gotten out, but these ghosts here, it's like the ghosts are haunting and, 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 and telling you like it's a fear. You don't want to do this. You don't want to go through that hole. You don't want to do something different. You want to stay what's with what's familiar. You want to stay and just do the same thing that you've always done. So it's like some toxic person or just a toxic voice or behavioral pattern. It's like staying safe and comfortable in the misery. That's what I'm picking up on for this masculine. The masculine was used to being, it was predictable and safe, the misery. So he just wanted to wallow in it. But at the same time, it's like he craved that very loving, kind energy from you because he had never really experienced it. But it's just like, it's just too much after a while. It's just too much. Yep, look at that, four of uh, cups. Discontent, he's not content enough within himself to be able to fully let you in and to fully open his heart to you. So he rejects you. 
He rejects what's good for him. He rejects what's loving and kind for him. So this masculine was not in the space at that particular time feminine to let you in. He was very used to being rejected. So he may have rejected you first before you could reject him because that's what he's been taught. Or it's just the rejection, um, re you know, rejecting things that are um, healthy or kind and loving because he may not have been used to that. So it's like, you, you you want it, you crave it, but then when you get it, you almost become repelled by it. That's what I'm picking up for this masculine. Doesn't know how to doesn't know how to how how to let that in. We have abducted. I'm not trying to say that this masculine had zero control, okay? Not at all. But there was someone else that didn't want him to leave their sphere. It's it's like friends or family that are all a certain way. Let's just use this as an example. Um, let's just say you're like a, a partier or uh, you know, a smoker or something like that. And you decide, hey, you know, I'm gonna just quit this. And then your friends who always like to go out to the bar or you guys are just like socially, casually just hanging out. It kind of changes this di dynamic. So you almost like wish that they didn't quit doing this or wish they didn't quit doing that because they've changed. So it starts to also happen with relationships. You meet someone, all of a sudden you're maybe wanting to spend time and not spend as much time with your old group of friends or your family. So sometimes really unhealthy people or toxic people will not be happy for you or even try to negatively chip at that relationship, hoping that it will end so they can get their friend back or they can get their family member back or whatever. And I just feel like there were some, you see these uh, tentacles, your person had a lot of tentacles around them from people that wanted them to be a certain way and didn't want to lose that version of that person. And this person had an opportunity to um, upgrade with you, but their old, their old shit was holding them back. So that's how it's coming to me. Just relaying it. Haunted house. Yeah, that, that's it. Face your fears, okay? Face your fears within the walls of your mind while finding fun and entertainment in the eerie. So it's like your person, they're haunted by the fact that there were other things and fears that held them back from entering into this home and this environment with you. And I feel like whatever they decided to stay in or go towards instead of you, choose something else instead of you, it didn't make them happy either. So the only thing that ended up happening is that they were discontent and now without you. So they lost you in the process, which was kind of dumb is what I'm seeing here. And we have the Ace of Bones, which is the Ace of Pentacles, New Ventures. You can see here, it's very scary. It's very dark, right, in those woods. But I feel like this particular masculine, one of his biggest regrets is that he didn't just, he didn't go for it. He let this opportunity pass him by with you. You know, it's like it was too late. That's how I'm seeing this. So anyways, you guys, we're going to now shift over onto the extended. If you'd like to join me over there, this is what we're going to go into. So I'll put the link down below in the description box as well as put it in the top comment section. But we're going to see the essence of you. How does your divine masculine see you, divine feminine, in his mind and feel you in his heart? We're also going to look at the karmic influences. What specific experiences with others have helped in uprooting his traumas and shadows? And then investigator, how does your divine masculine still keep tabs on you? And final act, what steps is your divine masculine preparing himself to take towards you and this connection? So hopefully you guys will join me over there. If not, no worries. I hope you enjoyed these messages today. And if you guys like what you saw and heard, definitely don't forget to give this video some love. I really appreciate it. All right, you guys, you take care. Bye-bye.